guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm here once again at the Diabetes Center. The first thing I do is to check my list of patients. And each patient could last half an hour each, you know, half an hour consult each. And at the moment, I have four patients, okay, because I'm only here for two hours. I have four patients, half an hour each, one of which is a telehealth um, appointment. What is telehealth? Telehealth is a, a clinical consult given to a patient through either video or telephone. And it became very, it became more popular when the COVID hits, okay, during the pandemic, because obviously there's lockdowns and, and people are not, are not allowed to go out their houses. So as a result, a lot of medical practices offer telephone consult telehealth, okay, giving medical consult, giving clinical consultation to patients through phone call, through video consultation, and the patient can stay at home. So like what I said, I have four patients today. I have tried calling my first patient for telehealth a few times, and he, he, he was not answering. So that's it. I'm just going to go browse my other three patients and see if there's anything else that really, really strikes me that I need to, you know, to, to discuss with them in a detailed way. Okay, so what I always do is I always check the pathology result, their blood result, and see if there's anything that is remarkable that I need to discuss with them, and then go back to their medication list and see if there's any changes with their medications. So let's do it now. And guys, it's becoming cold here in Australia. It's we are approaching the winter season, so I'm wearing my wools. It's a bit thick. It's enough to keep me warm. Let's check our other patient. <laughs> For my next patient, I still have eight minutes to spare. Why not I discuss with you about glycemic index? In short, GI. This is applicable not just to you know patients with people with, with diabetes, but also it is applicable to all of us. It is important for us to know which type of food contains a lot of carbohydrates, which is or which are bad for our sugar levels. All of us, whether we have diabetes or not, we have to look after our sugar levels. And we need to make sure that the food that we consume do not contain too much sugar. So let's discuss about glycemic index. And I'll show you, I'll show you the chart that I always use whenever I discuss about healthy diet with my patients. So here we go. So, like what I said, glycemic index, or GI in short, it is how the food that you eat is processed or digested quickly and how it can, it can affect your sugar level, okay? And we have two types of GI. We have the high GI, or high glycemic index, and we have low GI, or low glycemic index. And which one is good? Obviously, the low GI. The low GI, they are the ones that contain low sugar. And the high GI, the high GI group of food, they are the group of food that contains high sugar. Lower GI group of food, they are the group of food that can increase your sugar slowly. Higher GI, on the other hand, are the group of food that can increase your sugar levels quickly. So we want the low GI group of food, not the higher one. So what are the best examples? Us Filipinos, us Asians, the best example is rice rice is life <laughs> rice is life we eat rice on a day-to-day -day basis so what type of rice is best for diabetes and best for our sugar level okay let's see 
as you can see on the screen. We have lower GI and high GI. If you can have a look at the rice, Okay, we have here the lower GI for the, for the rice. The good rice for diabetes and for our sugar level are the ones that are long grain, whether it's white or brown, as long as they are long grain rice. The good example, the good examples are Basmati, Mahatma, and Dungara rice. Okay, having me myself haven't haven't seen Mahatma and Dungara rice yet but i've seen basmati okay they are the best for our sugar levels if you compare it to high gi which means the ones that you should be avoiding because you don't want your sugar levels to go up jasmine rice any color of rice if it's not long grain then it's bad for your sugar level bad for your diabetes best example is the white or brown medium grain rice the ones that you use for risotto, they, are, they also contain a lot of carbohydrates, which means they can easily, easily increase your sugar levels as well. The other good type of, of uh, rice are mugiri, I'm not saying mugiri myself, chia, quinoa. I'm pretty much sure quinoa, you are familiar with quinoa because they are um, becoming popular these days. Okay, sushi made from traditional Japanese rice. They're actually healthy. Okay, as long as they're made from traditional Japanese rice. So there you go. You have now an, you have now a good idea on what type of rice to consume. Now let's go to potatoes. Okay, do you know, guys, that in order for you to know whether this type of potato is healthy or not? is through its skin color. Let's have a look at the list. As you can see in the list, you go down to the um, potato column, the starchy vegetables. There is a potato uh, option there. It says that the lower GI or the good type of potato are the sweet potato orange flesh and also the yam potato. The, the potato varieties of Nicola and Marfona are the best type of potatoes. Now, if we're going to compare it with the higher GI potatoes, the bad potatoes, the bad ones that can make your sugar levels go up quickly, are all other white varieties. That means if, you're, if the potato that you bought is white colored, that means it is it is bad for your sugar level. It contains a higher glycemic index. What are these type of potatoes? These, these are Desiree, New, Pontiac, and Sebago potatoes. Also, those potatoes with a purple skin, they're not actually good for our diabetes or for our sugar levels. Okay, there you go, guys. So we'll talk about rice and potato. What else? Let's have a look. This one is also a very, very good topic to discuss. Fruits. We all love fruits but what type of fruits are good for diabetes and bad for our sugar level let's have a look at the list again all right as you can see guys the ones with a lower gi they're the good ones and the ones with a higher gi they are the bad ones so i'm just going to read it uh, to you the fruit that are lower gi are apple pear Banana, lightly ripe, nectarine, peach, apricot, plum, orange, mandarin, grapefruit, berries, kiwi, grapes, pineapple, popo. Popo is actually papaya, guys. Mango, figs. I don't think we that there are figs in the Philippines. Please read the note there. It says strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, and passion fruit have less carbohydrate compared to other fruits and have less effect on blood glucose levels. This means that any type of berries, strawberries, cranberries, anything that ends with berries, they are good for your diabetes, they're good for your sugar. 
Now let's compare it to our higher GI group of fruit. We have cantaloupe, they are high in sugar. Watermelon, lychee. Um, dried fruits as well, dried mangoes, they are processed, they contain a lot of sugar, they are bad for our health. All right guys, so you know what low GI or lower glycemic index and higher glycemic index are. The next thing that we, we will be discussing is about label reading. It's very, very easy to follow and it's very important not just for people with diabetes but also for all of us, okay? Label reading from the word itself, you're actually reading the label of the product that you're going to buy at your local supermarkets. So I'm going to show you these charts. Here we go. So label reading is designed to help you choose options that are lower in energy, lower in saturated and trans fat, lower in sugar, lower in sodium, which is salt, and higher in dietary fiber. So in this chart that I'm going to show to you again, we are going to label read as per 100, mil, 100 grams per 100 mil. So if you're going to buy something from the supermarket, okay, go grab something now from your, from your kitchen because I've grabbed one <laughs> from our staff kitchen. So if you buy something, whether it's in a pack, in a bottle, in a can, you can see nutritional content, nutritional information, something like this. So in that nutritional content, you can see energy, protein, fat, uh, carbohydrate, sugar, and sodium content. This is what you're going to use to label read. I'm going to show you this chart again. So as you can see, like what I said, we are reading the nutritional content per 100 gram per 100 mil. According to this chart, we are actually after, for the, for the energy, we're after we're aiming for 600 kj per serve. kj is kilojoule. Okay, so we're after 600 kj per serve. Now for saturated fat, we are aiming for less than 2 grams per 100 grams. Okay, for trans fat, we are after 1 gram per 100 gram. For sugar, which is very important, we're aiming for less than 15 grams per 100 grams. That means if you, if you buy a product which has sugar content, anything that is above 15, that means it's bad. It's, it contains a lot of sugar, which is bad for you. Sodium or salt, we're aiming for less than 400 milligrams per 100 grams or less than 120 milligrams per 100 grams. And that is the better option. For dietary fiber, we are aiming for more than 5 grams per 100 grams. If you follow those recommendations, I'm pretty much sure that your sugar level will be stable. Thank you everyone and I shall see you again on my next vlog. And I think my next patient has arrived and is waiting for me. So I'm just going to call her.